Well, thank, thank you. I, I appreciate it. will be welcomed again. Uh, let's, uh, we will switch, uh, switch the language right now. Panie i Panowie, chciałbym Państwa serdecznie zaprosić na przemówienie We are going to listen to the speech by our Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Poland, Ms. Elżbieta Bienkowska. Madam, there, well, there is no need to introduce you, but um, you know, during those conferences, um, um, people tend to introduce other, other speakers for several minutes. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go on too long, but just for the sake of formality, Madam, as Deputy Prime Minister, she became Deputy Prime Minister last year in November. She's responsible for infrastructure and development in Poland. And previously, she had been Minister for Regional Development in 2007. And even before that, Ms. Deputy Prime Minister had been Director at the Marshal's Office of the Salesian Voivodeship or province. So this is a clear sign that in a, in a democratic Polish state, a hardworking, talented and smart person has all career paths open um, before her. So um, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, she is uh, clearly um, proof of the success of the Polish state. So Madam, please take the floor. Please put your hat on. I will continue in Polish. Uh, panie Prezydencie, Panie Ministrze, Mr. President, and ministers, the mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you cordially for inviting me to, to join you for today's meeting. It is uh, truly an honor for me to participate in this fifth forum and to um, um, have the chance to, to talk to you. I will uh, present the, the other side, so to speak, um, uh, of the 25 years of Polish transformation. It is not a simple task. We have been talking for several days about it. We have been um, celebrating this 25th anniversary of our freedom, and uh, every single one of us has their own experiences. Uh, everyone remembers the 25 years, and from the social point of view, um, uh, differently uh, than from the um, private point of view. And I will try to um, make sure that my personal uh, judgment um, is um, well, as unbiased as possible, but um, it seems to me that our experiences tend to um, become particularly significant if we, especially if we look at all the reformist uh, efforts um, just across our border, we are in constant um, contact with our colleagues from the Ukraine. And uh, I think that we um, should um, emphasize that determination, that uh, resolute action on the point of all the political forces in relation to the most important issues, also the determination of the uh, whole society uh, with um, favorable external conditions. All this may uh, truly change a country uh, and uh, bring about a total and complete transformation. It is just um, sufficient to take any road. I drove to Wrocław uh, from Katowice, and if you have any any personal recollections um, in that area, this is something that even that, that is unimaginable that this actually happened in the span of one human life. Now, looking, at the, looking back at the 25 years, uh, we have to admit that the transformation has meant two uh, essential things. First of all, a radical social and political uh, uh, tr transformation, and uh, secondly, fundamental changes in the economy, in the economic system. Uh, two things I mentioned before, and uh, everybody was was certain from uh, from the, the very start uh, since 1989. Everybody's been certain that uh, that uh, it's uh, most important to introduce market solutions and to include the uh, country and make it part of uh, of international structures, economic structures, and political structures, and uh, uh, the starting point was a very complex situation. Uh, this is rather a restrictive term to call it a complex situation we were dealing with in the 80s. Uh, we all remember that. Um, as Poles, uh, uh, our foreign guests may remember that uh, from their own experience. Uh, but 70% uh, of GDP at that time, 90% of industrial 
industry of production used to be produced in the public sector at that time. And foreign trade, which used to be controlled by the state, uh, used to focus on the USSR and on uh, the countries of, um, uh, of the, that council of um, mutual uh, economic aid that used to be called, there was an institution like that. And um, one of the more important problems was the decapitalization of uh, property and the uh, decreasing competitiveness of the Polish economy at that time in the 80s. We witnessed all that. Uh, shops were empty. There was hyperinflation. There was a crisis in public finance. And uh, on the 4th of June 1989, after the first um, partly free elections held at that time. Just six months ago, uh, in uh, December 89, uh, the Polish parliament, the same, adopted a, um, a package of laws which provided instruments for economic stabilization. And that plan was known as the, the plan Balcerowicz, um, and many solutions were introduced at that time which dramatically um, uh, turned around the uh, economic situation in Poland. In the first place, uh, the remnants of the central planning uh, system were mm, done away with. Secondly, action measures were uh, introduced to stabilize the economy, making prices realistic, uh, strengthening of this lottery. Uh, thirdly, prices were deregulated and reglementation was uh, done away with. And um, fourthly, control over foreign trade by the state was abolished, uh, internal exchange ability of the um, Zloty was introduced. The process of privatization was launched, uh, which was supposed to transform property and to bring it closer to structures uh, in place in countries much more developed than Poland at that time. Now, uh, uh, when we undertook those political and social transformations, the direction we actually started heading towards uh, was meant to include us in international and European structures. It has to be emphasized that on the 19th of September, uh, just, just just look how, how quickly it all went. In June, the elections, in September, there was the um, also agreement on uh, trade and collaboration between, between uh, Poland and the EEC. Uh, in December, then a European uh, agreement followed on the association between Poland and the uh, European member states. And in the preamble in 1991, it was determined that the final goal of Poland was its membership of the European community. And the the formal uh, application, the formal request um, for membership uh, was uh, submitted in 94. In 95, um, uh, Poland was one of the founder members of WTO, and uh, in 96 uh, became member of the OECD, and finally in 99 became member of the NATO. We, I, I just read it all in one um, in one go, but um, just to make you realize how it all went, the individual stages of. Um, of or individual division, all the things I listed, namely the uh, restrictive uh, stabilization policy, the um, deregulation of imports, the fiscalism, privatization, all those things led to significant, substantial economic costs of the reforms being implemented. And uh, uh, we owe respect and appreciation for the Polish society uh, for the fact that all people uh, over the first years, even though they were affected personally by, by those um, actions, actions uh, from the market transformations. First, the deep, uh, profound structural changes were noticed. And uh, as a result, between 94 and 97, we recorded an unprecedented uh, growth on the European scale, 6% per annum. That was our economic growth at the time. But it has to be said, too, that starting from uh, 93, uh, but invest them reasonably. So uh, my synthesis of uh, the achievement so far um, also needs to be accompanied by the following statement, namely that in Poland over the 25 years, this rest of the world. Well, obviously, it is important that Polish businesses, as a result of uh, 
those measures which were implemented, join into the global production chains, joined um, the global economy, and now they are full-fledged uh, members of the international market. And uh, also an important symptom of the transformation process, something which which we don't always well we do feel it as Poles, but we don't often appreciate it, is the um, increase of um, social well-being. Uh, just um, I would like to remind. 70 percent more or less now it's more than 70 percent so developing at this rate and these are actually the forecasts we can be sure that within the next two or three years we will have reached the level of 75 percent of the european average and uh, reaching 2020 we'll have reached about 80 something percent of uh, uh, the, the European level in terms of GDP per capita. Long-term forecasts, and actually uh, all forecasts, show that at least until 2030, Poland will keep developing at a faster rate than other European Union countries. Some economists actually claim that we have already avoided the trap of um, average income. The government keep um, making sure that uh, uh, the future is planned in such a way as to avoid that trap, uh, even though according to the World Bank's uh, data, our GDP at uh, purchasing parity has already exceeded the threshold uh, considered to be the trap of average income. In 2012, this was 22,000 US dollars per capita, um, and this level is um, actually the average income income level is calculated at 15 to 16,000 uh, USD. So what uh, is in store for us now, um, we have to think about the next 25 years. Um, we should rejoice, actually. We should be happy that the forecasts indicate that until 2030 we will be developing. Uh, however, we must not rest on our laurels, uh, so to speak. Uh, speaking of the average income trap, we um, we don't have to. Uh, we know that that we are actually departing from uh, the, uh, a starting point. Uh, of a country which uses, uh, which relies on, on cheap labor force. But this is um, slowly disappearing in Poland. In this huge effort of modernization, actually, my ministry is responsible for the ministry I run is responsible for that. It w has been responsible for that since um, 2007 for this huge modernization investment package uh, worth more than 120 billion euro. And uh, there is another step ahead of us, but we are thinking not about 2020 merely, but even further than that, we are thinking about how to intensify the um, activities undertaken by the Polish economy to make sure that we effectively, effectively become uh, truly competitive in terms of what's happening in our minds. Uh, what is our goal is uh, uh, actually in, to invest profoundly in our manufacturing potential uh, to create connections between Polish academia and the market to develop more involvement on the part of the private sector in collaboration with the universities, higher educational institutions. Um, I would just like to mention that we have only 0.9 GDP uh, goes to research and development in Poland. All, all the European Union member states is about 2%. So we would like to achieve that level by 2020. However, this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is to make sure that Polish entrepreneurs actually contribute to that process, to make sure sure that half of the spending uh, represents spending out of private pockets. Uh, currently, all the spending on R&D is public spending. There's only a, mm, uh, a fraction, a very small fraction of private, private spending. So this is something we should look to in the future. Another thing is related, I haven't mentioned that uh, yet, but I think in the context of Ukraine and what, what I've been talking about to my um, equivalent uh, in the Ukraine, the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine, I think it's very important what we call uh, social and territorial coherence in Poland uh, uh, to make sure that all uh, regions develop in the, in the same uh, way. And in Poland, uh, we've actually put a lot of effort uh, to make sure that all various regions, of course, some at a slower rate, some at a faster rate, but 
ten dystans this, między Unią to make sure that the distance between the European Union and uh, the individual regions in Poland is diminished. And this is um, uh, something that uh, results from the administrative reform, the local governments in 1990 and then in 19, 1980 there was another reform of Polish administration. We know that for our Ukrainian partners this is one of the fundamental things, regional reform, administrative reform, which uh, empowers the regions. Obviously Poland is not a fed federal country, but it has a lot of empowerment, uh, a lot of um, authority given to the individual regions. So this is one of the most important tasks, and I think that if we look at economic development and what has been happening in Poland, I think that this has been one of the um, leading factors, the drivers of Polish success. And another thing is the path leading us to the Eurozone. Of course, we haven't met all the uh, conditions, all the requirements just yet uh, to enter the Eurozone. We haven't met all the conditions that a country has to meet. We have first, we first have to meet those conditions and then we have to look at the situation in uh, the Eurozone countries and outside it and then we are going to decide which way to go. Uh, and the uh, Polish government, which is also very important, I think, uh, I think it's important to say that uh, clearly. The Polish government believes that um, um, we have to make sure that uh, all the actions undertaken in recent years, at least that's my impression, uh, that something has, so sometimes the media say that uh, it's been happening, but it hasn't been happening of its, of, of its own accord. We have done a huge effort, we have made a huge effort over the recent years uh, in order to uh, point precisely the place where we are going uh, until 2020 and until, until 2030. We've been setting ourselves clear goals, we've been putting in order the packages of strategic documents, I talked earlier about central planning, but indeed in Poland, uh, if we look back seven years ago, we had strategic documents, we had 400 strategic documents at governmental level, which meant we didn't have any priorities. Now we have eight documents, which means that some priorities have been set. To sum up, I would like to say that the ex experiences we have, and just to reiterate, um, uh, showing the uh, determination on the part of individual governments and showing the uh, resilience and the uh, activity on the part of the society. Uh, this is all a very uh, valuable indication for the countries. Our position in the European Union, uh, the level of uh, life which has improved uh, uh, versus 25 years ago and the competitiveness of our economy prove that this painful process has to be undertaken, it's worth undertaking, and that such a process is absolutely essential in order to make sure that one functions successfully in the European Union. Obviously, um, we cannot but uh, accentuate certain elements which uh, the decision makers in the Ukraine and the society uh, should um, actually look um, at very closely. I'm talking about a strong SME sector, and this is obviously related to, um, to taking matters in uh, one's own hands uh, by the people. This is related to uh, energy and to people perceiving and uh, noticing opportunities for themselves and for their businesses also but also all the parts all, all, all the measures on yes I'm going to finish I know I'm short of time uh, all the measures um, uh, undertaken by the state aimed at strengthening uh, that sector are absolutely crucial and I would like to repeat um, uh, reform of local authorities of local self-governments I know because I talked to my um, colleagues from the Ukraine. This is something that's very important for them. Apart from diplomatic support, obviously, uh, diplomatic support is also necessary and good decisions are necessary related to contacts and trading with Russia. The local government reform, strengthening power at local self-government level, giving them certain instruments and certain power, certain authority, but this is all, always followed by certain responsibilities. So this is giving big responsibility to local self-government the authorities at various levels. Perhaps this might prove for the Ukraine in the next months and the coming years, this might prove a key thing for them. And finally, integration, as it happened here, integration with Western Europe and um, benefiting from this historic opportunity which 
Poland was given. Poland is a bit more to the west, but um, uh, and the words of uh, Mr. Mayor that uh, actually, uh, the, no, Mr. President, sorry, he talked about Zapad. Well, I think the Minister of National Defense is going to talk about that. And this worried me a bit. But we have to benefit from the historic opportunity, and Ukraine has to benefit from it. The historic opportunity has been given. The support on the part of Europe and of the rest of the world, it seems to me that uh, on, only a rapid and coherent action undertaken in the coming months uh, may um, may kind of break through this um, diplomatic trend we have been observing. I haven't said anything about the gray and black areas in Polish transformation. We have many things to do. It's not that we've done everything. Um, well, in any country, life goes on and life uh, changes and life brings about new challenges. We live in a world which is constantly changing and um, actually the recent years have shown that uh, very clearly indeed. And uh, in June 2014, however, we have found ourselves uh, at a point when we may be proud as Poles and we can share our experiences with our neighbors. Thank you very much.